There you are. Welcome to Unlocking the Truth. This is Kit Coffer and I'm on with David Hopper. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're talking about current events. Have you been watching the news at all today, uh, David? I looked at all the headlines this morning. Well, uh, we're all snowed in here in Oklahoma and so not a lot to do outside. And so today uh, we decided to just talk about what's on the news. So uh, something I sent you just a little bit earlier was a, uh, a protest down in Canberra, Australia. Yeah, I uh, was watching. It. I wasn't really sure what was going on with the audio and everything to, to know what the situation was. You know more about that? I just saw a video on TikTok and there really wasn't an explanation, uh, but I all of these news articles are links so as you can see my my cursor turns to a finger i can click on it and go to the news article and read well, see here's about. the problem with it is that you until we know who who these people were i mean you can't really make a a good judgment on who was right or wrong or whatever you know because you saw a group of people confronting police officers well, I've, I've been following it for quite some time and uh, they're trying to lock people up. If you even leave your house, they're going to put you in a oh, really? concentration camp. Dang. And so these people are all getting taken to concentration camps probably for gathering. In Australia? For gathering. Look at that feather. That's a sweet feather, dude. Uh, Australia has had some of the strongest lockdown mandates. Of, and you know what? They've had the strongest ones this whole time. And up until last year, they had zero cases that actually resulted in death. They, or no, it was uh, four. They had four cases that resulted in death. Yeah. And and uh, no, no, no. I, I might be wrong. I think it might have been four cases altogether. <clears throat> so they don't even have any COVID in Australia, but they're definitely afraid of it. And they're trying to keep people well, from leaving their houses. Yeah, I guess it really comes down to how you define the. I don't know, man. That's tough. I and mean, if they've only had four cases, I mean, is that true? They've, there's only been four cases in Australia. Can we find? Do you have? Can you pull something up on that? shows there was none and then it spiked up and so october there was hardly any okay. and then all of a sudden december 19th 2021 it started spiking up but still they're only at, they're they're at a hundred thousand now when was that that it, that it went up that was that was around uh, December of 2021. So let's look at uh, Australia news, December, whatever that date was. December 2021. Australia news. Let's go Sky News. Biggest news stories of they were now nah, that's kind of an overview. We really need it kind of detailed down to whatever current events would create a. I wonder if we could just do a timeline. A Wikipedia, but it looks like it looks like it's gone. It's already it's spiked. So now, I mean, they might as well just let people go free. Here we go. Look at this. This is a complete mm -hmm. almanac on Wikipedia. Oh, okay, nice. Perfect. A few so months 16. before, so this is election time. Okay. Uh, Canterbury, Bankstown, Bulldogs announce contract terminated, refused vaccine. So that's that's when their major sports star refused to do the vaccine. Oh, that was all was that sudden, the tennis all, thing? Was that the tennis? I deal think or so. Yeah. Is that something else? Huh. Yeah. Uh. It says Bankstown Bulldogs. 
So that's uh, probably soccer, rugby. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, fire! Mm -hmm. A fire broke out in the entrance of Parliament. Police confirmed fire and started by protesters. So they were starting to protest. <laughs> So yeah, they were already protesting then over, were they protesting over uh, like quarantine mandates? Yep. Hmm. Well, so. So that's uh, right. That's when it started hitting. Whenever they, whenever everyone started revolting, that's when it actually got there. So there wasn't even any COVID before that. Hmm. So it's uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. I I, I sent you another TikTok that I saw that said the uh, Spanish flu was not Spanish and it wasn't the flu. Turns out it was bacterial meningitis, and it was actually started in America by the Rock and Rockefeller University, and uh, just like the virology. I, dude, I, I'm uh, gonna have to see the freaking source on that. I don't know. That's pretty conspiratorial, but I mean, I'm not. I don't, that's the first time I've heard that. So I'm not saying it's not true, but I'd like to see a reputable source. None of this stuff is even hidden. I don't think it'll be hard to even find. If influenza exposes the true killer. So what, what who is this website? Uh, I don't know. I'm just clicking on stuff. Rockefeller Foundation. Menin meningitis vaccine trial. U.S. camp. Yeah. The Rockefeller Foundation. So this is what I was reading is that it was actually started by a, in a military camp. The troops were forced to take the vaccine as a uh, test group. And then they turned around and sent them to Europe. And when they came back from Europe, every it had spread everywhere. It actually stopped World War One. And um, so it actually, it was, it, the, the flu stopped World War I. So it's almost like putting a nuclear bomb off. Uh, like how they stopped World War II with the nuclear bomb. They, we stopped World War I with the Spanish flu. But we were able to hide it uh, by sending it over with the troops. They spread it all over Europe. And when we, they got back from Europe, we... We basically uh, slandered all the Europeans as having diseases, and everyone started. By the time the, our troops got back, everyone in America was already wearing masks and getting inoculated and stuff. But they were getting ready to go to war. Is that what you're saying? They were getting ready to go to war. Yeah, let's just read it. An article shared over sixty thousand times on Facebook attributes deadly nineteen eighteen pandemic known as the Spanish flu to massive military vaccination experiment at Fort Riley, Kansas. While a men meningitis vaccine trial did take place, experts contacted by Reuters said a meningitis vaccine could not have caused the flu pandemic. Well, that's the whole point. They're saying it wasn't the flu. Just like right now, there's, they're saying that uh, this upper rep respiratory virus is the flu, but Half the time it. Oh, what were you? Well, how? What were you saying was its effect on World War One? You said that they were getting ready to have a war, and this stopped it, or it doesn't really uh, matter because this is all from Facebook, and there's no to, there's no way to confirm any of this because it. This is a news article from Reuters that is, I mean, this is just bad journalism. They're they're talking about a Facebook article it doesn't even say where the information came from yeah sometimes you gotta read the whole thing that's why i just read the headlines most of the time. anyway i wasn't really concerned and going real deep into all that i was basically wanting to hit all the headlines here and uh another protest that's happening at the same time which canada and australia are very close kind of uh politically uh and i thought it was interesting that canada and um yeah, they had the big trucker convoy uh, thing that some people are calling was a blockade. I got the trucker you know? right behind me. So, I mean, it's, it's 50 if, you're, if they're going to label it as a blockade, then it's something like what they're saying happened at the Capitol. Really? I mean, against the government, if they're 
like a blockade is a sort of, I don't know what the prefix would be for it, but a military strategy. Well, the, there's two things about this that make it uh, interesting uh, as a, a tactic. And that's uh, number one, uh, the, they're calling for the military to come in to try, try to help because the police can't get all those vehicles out of there if they did take them. Take them. Oh, yeah. You're, I haven't talking, have, you're, you're talking I about having 50,000 police driving 50,000 semis without CDL licenses. And then you have uh, so 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 if then you have the issue. Right, let's say can't, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Th then okay. you have the issue that uh, the fact that they're just sitting in their trucks, they're not actually doing anything. So if you try to arrest them and take their property, they can just say, "Well, I'm just sitting in my truck. I'm stuck in traffic. I'm not even part of the protest." Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you're looking at a scenario that's pretty similar to what happened January 6th last year. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I, I think it's interesting that uh, there's a lot of good things <laughs> happening uh, for Trump supporters right now, but uh, no one's really doing anything. Uh, well, I, I take that back. There are American truckers up there on the Canadian border that are part of the, all that. I mean, are there, uh, well, what, I, what are we hearing from other truckers? I mean, is there... I will like say that the Border opposition? Patrol is finally standing up to their bosses. Who? The Border Patrol is finally standing up to their bosses. About the uh, immigration crisis? Yeah. So yeah, I was watching I was watching C-SPAN. I was watching C-SPAN, and there was a really good speaker. He was... Uh, he was pretty had a lot of logic and, and seemed like and he was just you could tell he was speaking from his heart. I mean, I don't know. I can't judge him, but uh, he was talking about how it's gone from uh, for uh, 20,000 a month in December of last year, I think, maybe. And I my memory is not always great, but I'm pretty sure. So but you can check the facts yourself. But and then in a year's time, it went up to 90,000. I saw 144,000, and it was supposedly three in one month in December. Yeah, it was three times more than the the past three December's combined. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, in this article here, I, I found uh, there's a lot of uh, border patrol agents that are getting shot by the cartel on our side of the border. So this is literally a hot war. We're just not doing anything about it. He said 100 he said according to their data 100% of fentanyls coming through the Mex across the Mexican border. Well, that comes from China. That's the whole deal. I I want He said and he said last year 100,000 people died of drug overdoses. Hey, if you were if you were China and you wanted to attack America like literally with land troops, would you go would you here, I got two two places for you. You're going to do number 1 you're going to have them all come out of the port in L.A. out of, out of all those millions of container ships. And then and then you're going to come up through Mexico. I mean, they, as far as we know, they have container ships full of tanks just sitting there in Mexico waiting to come north. Yeah, I think I think the I don't really I, I've never had somebody come straight out to me and tell me they were a communist, you know, so I don't know if I've ever met one. But. You know, there's some people that are if like if I had to judge them as being that way, you know, they're kind of borderline, maybe. I don't know. But I think that they're, you know, the communists are they play the long term game. And I think that they've there's a long process of breaking up the family units that made America strong. And so, I mean, and now they're really exploiting it with immigration and you know illegal I have, immigration i have to and disagree with you David. influence and influence and in, in a lot of these uh, almost, almost activism every, almost every time we uh blame anything on a foreign entity we end up finding out later on that america funded the whole thing and used him as a pawn almost every single time um think about it Nobody well is that that's only transparent because we're more transparent here that's only because uh, that's okay. that's the facts that come out, and and we don't see a lot of facts from well, let's, well, let's just uh, look at this a way. communist country. 
Let's look at this fact right here from a communist country. Uh, Russia and Ukraine agree to continue ceasefire talks. Russia, Ukraine, France, Germany agree to new talks. Dude. And everyone in America is saying, let's send 50,000 troops over there. Um, well, so that's the thing. They're, they have 100,000 there. I believe that we're instigating all of this just to, to cover up whatever Biden. <clears throat> I mean, somebody, I heard a guy say it that earlier. He said Putin wants to have it like it was. Uh, what was the king? Um, what the hell was his name? Let me look it up. He wants to basically what a king and an older kingdom, the the land of it, and the the old Soviet Union went to all of it. Think of all the resources that are there oh, yeah. because they've well, been they've been more. Uh, allied with the western side and they prospered and now he he wants it back well I mean, they already they back whenever they had the winter olympics in sochi uh he took part of ukraine back then and uh he said at the time that the the worst tragedy to hit the ussr for the world he said the worst tragedy on earth in the 20th century was Russia's loss of the Ukraine. For them, maybe. Also, um, this is news that uh, I found surprising. They're not really saying much about it. Islamic State leader killed during U.S. raid in Syria. This just happened this morning. Leader of violent Islamic State group was killed Thursday, blowing himself up along with members of his family during an overnight raid carried out. Oh, it says he blew himself up. Well, they, I think if it's the same one I was reading about earlier today, uh, there was a, they had to destroy a helicopter that was malfunctioning, and they had to and with explosives or some kind of uh, ordinance. I would think this would look way more screwed up if there was a helicopter crashing this one. What do you think? Yeah, I mean that you don't see any helicopter debris right there. But I mean, I'm that's what I'm saying. I don't know if like there was different explosions. I'm sure, but I, the one I was reading there was helicopter explosions. I also was looking at uh, Lithuania uh, is the first country to actually recognize Taiwan as an embassy and let them use their name Taiwan. Yeah, Lithuania, yeah. Uh, I worked with a guy from Lithuania once, and he was awesome, dude. Awesome guy. Uh, I, so I, I don't a, know. I had to uh, point and it. actually, at the time, he, he, you know, I asked him. I said, you know, what, what do people want over there? You know, do they want to be... Com do they want to be part of like the Soviet Union or do they want to be uh, the new Russian Federation? And he said there was a division. And I don't, you know, I don't think he ever, I never asked him what his um, side was, you know, but I, I just know that he was working for the their military at that time. I had some foreign exchange students back in uh, 2010. Uh, that were from Czechoslovakia and Germany, and I asked them what they thought. And um, the kid from Germany didn't really seem to have too much. Uh, he he uh, he didn't really want to talk about it. There was stigma, of, you know, around Nazis and war with Russia. And, but the kid from Czechoslovakia had a lot to say about it. He he said that they were scared crapless because you can't even make a washing machine if Germany tells you you can't. And, and uh, basically all their goods are held because they're in the EU, Germany makes all the rules. So all these little countries around Germany have no real power. They're the flyover states. And, and um, they're just waiting for the day that Russia decides to invade again. And they're just caught between Germany and Russia, and they just know that they're going to be caught.
caught in the middle of a war one day. They just wonder when. Uh, did you see the article about Hungary wanting to work up a deal with Russia on uh, energy? I think probably natural gas or. I heard something oil. about, yeah, natural gas. I heard about that. Uh, and there was people upset about it that they, they're calling him treasonous, the leader that went over there. You got England's prime, what is he, prime minister? What's his name? Boris Johnson. I can yeah, see they, right down there. They've lifted, they, he lifted uh, all restrictions, mandates, passports. His, uh, his approval yeah. ratings were in the trash. So they just reversed everything. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and what's crazy is still here in America, we still have people uh, on account. And they're saying that the number one cause of police deaths, even though we're seeing these massive funerals in New York City, even though we're seeing these huge funerals with 40,000 cops in, uh, there, um, the leading cause of death is the vaccine. Uh, who, I mean, who, I'd, I'd have to see the, all right, let's, what, where is that the article? article? This is a uh, Yahoo News. COVID is leading <laughs> cause of death for police. So why are police unions still resisting the vaccine? Wait a second. COVID is leading cause of death. The police unions are resisting it? That's weird. Why wouldn't they resist it if it's the leading cause of death? COVID is the leading cause of death. Oh. So why are the unions resisting oh, the, the vaccine? The thing I read earlier, I could have sworn it said, I wonder if it, oh. when I embedded it, I wonder if it said something different. What did it say just now when we looked at it before we clicked on it? COVID is leading death. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So COVID, I, I stand corrected. Uh, I've read that wrong. Hey, how easy it is for, for people who are, are not good readers to, to misinterpret. And also that just shows my, my personal bias to my own opinion. Uh, you know, I saw what I wanted to see. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> but I could have sworn I read that one point. Uh, they said so 900,000, 900, almost a million, you know, they're going to hit that million people mark soon. And it's going to be, well, think I wonder, about this. I wonder if those I'm predicting, cops that, got shot I'm predicting that, that in our very near future, there's going to be a million person, millionth person winner of the millionth COVID death. Yeah, well. Because they're at 900,000 right now. <laughs> I don't think that's a, a winning situation, but <laughs> uh, I, I, when I, I'm, I, that was a uh, so, that was sarc I guess <laughs> sarcasm uh, because there's a lot of people who are upset about how the why they're not trying to find the origin of this, right? Not even answering questions about so it. that somebody can be held accountable. Um, speaking of accountability, uh, people are being fired from CNN left and right. Um, I've been saying that, uh, they were fake news since even before Trump started saying it. Uh, but now it's all, it, there's a lot of vindication happening right now. Everything that, uh, the, the conservatives have been saying and the left has been calling them uh, conspiracy theorists for is now starting to come out. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and did you hear about Whoopi Goldberg getting uh, fired or suspended? Uh, yeah, or something about she can get out of her contract. I don't know, the loopholes or something I saw. Yeah, well, that, she's saying the that. The uh, thing I'd seen on that story. She said on Colbert. I, I don't even know. I knew it was something about some kind of thing that had to do with some kind of uh, offensive remark to a group of people. So go ahead and enlighten us on, on this situation. All right. So uh, she said that the uh, World War II uh, or specifically the Holocaust was not about race because it was between two groups of white people. Uh, and she said that was the reason why they had to label them with with uh, barcodes, the tattoos, is because you couldn't tell one from another. And uh, she actually, I mean, that's factually accurate, uh, but 
Um, obviously, um, Hitler saw the Germans as a master race and separate from all the other groups. And that was the whole point. It's not really, a I mean, really the answer to this question is not um, whether or not the Jews were a race, but whether or not Hitler viewed the Germans as a race. And he certainly did see the Germans as a unique line of people uh, separate from other Europeans. Um, so, I mean, okay, so what is her, how is she, so is she drawing a division based on religion or, or she's just saying that, I mean, what is she saying? It was the, the, the division between the Jews and the Nazis. It looks like uh, the whole thing started because of a controversy about the Ma's book. I read that when I was, I was a librarian. Dude, I saw, uh, I saw a comic in, on, I think it might've been Facebook or somewhere else, but I was like, what does that mean? And, or I might've been researching something and came across it and I looked and it looked like, uh, it said it was one of the most famous of its kind. So, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a graphic novel that, um, changes the people to mice so that it's easier to talk about the sticky situation yeah. with kids so uh they it moths well, well, isn't it, it cats and mice uh yes so the cats are like the nazis and the mice are yeah. are the jews uh and and so it kind of dehumanizes the whole thing so that you can talk about it in a way that's not offensive um but uh let's read what she said in her experience as a black person, she said, race is something I can see. If the Ku Klux Klan is coming down the street with a Jewish friend, I'm going to run. But if my friend decides not to run, they'll get passed by most times because you can't tell who's Jewish, she said. It's not something that people say. Oh, that person is Jewish. Yet, yes, it is something people say. She's, she's basically <laughs> saying that all black people are the same. Right. You know, like they're the same religion. They're, they come from the same tribe, you know, whatever. Many different races within the African-American yeah. uh, uh, species are they're not species, but they're they're uh, what, what, what do you call what's the scientific term for uh, I mean, it's not a uh, genus or I, I don't know, something like that. But, yeah. but, but I remember reading, I remember looking at an anthropology book when I was in college and it showed skull types and everyone, you could tell if someone's Caucasian by the certain uh, cracks they have on top of their head. They're called sutures or something like that. Sutures on yeah. top of your head. They have a certain pattern and uh, Africa is actually the most diverse of these patterns. There's more variations within African skulls than there is in North American or Asian or anywhere else. Right. And then that's one of the main reasons they believe that in the, um, the, uh, the um, land bridge theory uh, for Native Americans crossing the, the Bering Strait is because this, the skull types of Navajos closely resemble those of Asia uh, in the in the like uh, steps of Russia. Have you ever yeah, seen I mean there's there's a there's a lot of different evidence. I mean that you have know, you ever where, seen they find, where they can find you know commonalities about the things that they're discovering. Have you ever um, seen the Russian Native Americans? No one ever talks about this. I want to show you two cool things that I discovered. Well, that's what I was I was talking to my students about the other day was that, you know, like Alaska just became a state in, uh, what was it, 1959? Well, I mean, it, it's really obvious when you see these people, the link between uh, Eskimos of the Northwest Coast and uh, Mongol people. There's obviously a missing link there. From Kazakhstan, one of the oldest lines of DNA. Yeah, you have noticed come from Kazakhstan, and, and and really a lot of people. I mean, the the history of the Mongols has been erased. I mean, not not erased. It's still out there, but there is so much information about 
um, the people of Central Asia that um, doesn't really like most people. It. Most people would like Whippy Goldberg. She'd look at uh, Putin and she'd say, "Oh, he's a Caucasian." But it, she's because because she's never really looked him in the face. You know, he looks like he's the description you're giving, Mo Mongolian or whatever. You know, see these totem poles. See these totem poles? Mm -hmm. Totem poles? Guess where these are? Uh, probably, I don't know. North Korea. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, the tell that this is a Korean totem pole. Look at, look how close that is. It says Korean totem pole. Well, that, you know, the thing about Cherokee is they say they didn't have totem poles. No, but these look just like the ones at the Tlingit right across the ocean. And we're told that, you know, we, we don't hear anything about Korea having contact or having, I mean, th this sounds like. Yeah, so, but uh, what, this uh, is not like there's no this is not an ancient. There's no this historical is not a evidence of Cherokee Indians having totem poles. So you're, you're kind of, you're doing the same thing Whoopi Goldberg's doing it by just like, uh, putting everybody in the same i'm saying this is a clear cultural mixture. distribution of this is a distribution of culture that has happened in the last thousand years and it's not this is this is not pre-land bridge so there could have been koreans in north america oh sure yeah everybody was here or, or everybody was Germany. everybody that's why it's a melting pot everybody was here but then war over it was probably like and that's what i think like there's been a lot of war in america it wasn't until they had ways to transport enough materials and equipment and and gain some you know ground and then start colonizing and pushing forward it's just there was a lot of atrocity probably that happened during all of that time uh i want to try to bring in a little lighter note real quick uh david uh do you believe that if someone is in oklahoma <clears throat> and they're wearing an alabama shirt that that is cultural appropriation i don't it, i don't it, <laughs> it, does, it doesn't even matter to me like it's, it's when people You're not like, from there. when i see it when i see a man wearing somebody else some other man's name on his back it's like it's dumb is what it is to me right like i, I i'm good with sports i don't have a problem with it i just don't i'm not that entertained but i'll watch the championship games or something on <clears throat> one of the same way. that's I why professional sports that's why some people people's, like like, some exactly. people's whole identity is wrapped up in which team they're for and i was thinking about it the other day and like right when baseball was becoming its most popular in America and uh, now it's been exported to places like Japan and everywhere else, think about the impact that probably had on gang warfare. I mean, you probably almost saw gang warfare completely dry up once people like had a team to root for. And you know what? I, 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 right now I've got to eat my words. Like here's the thing, dude. I just posted some pictures on Facebook with Hulkamania on my shirt. So I just was a total hypocrite in what I said. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, That's but, but it's still like, I don't care. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't affect me. I don't have an opinion. I guess I, I guess I had an opinion by saying people are dumb for it. I've done, I'm pretty dumb, I guess then too. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, on the topic of, uh, of grouping yourself together with people, uh, Black Lives Matter turns out uh, there's, a, there's a senator looking into their finances and there's millions that are gone unaccounted for and they want to know who's in charge. And apparently they can't even find out that there's no person in charge. <laughs> apparently they've covered their tracks and made a, a quick exit and they're saying this is fraud. If, if no one is going to fess up to who got this money and where it went, then we're charging you all with fraud. 
Uh, also, uh, man, I think they, I think they just got a little excited. Everybody got excited, you know. So I don't I know. Think it's it's okay. Let it go. I, I think it's, it's gone. Totally Let it go. I, I'm saying there's no, there's no. I, I personally believe, from other evidence that I've seen, and you know things I've been seeing for years now, that this is a CIA front. It's a... Yeah, I mean, that's one of the, and that's the thing about it. I mean, if it's gone, it's gone. Uh, you know, whoever's uh, perpetuating get... it, if it's over money, then I don't need to listen to them. I don't care about money. I mean, right. I do, but I, not. It's So uh, in California, <laughs> um, I saw that they're wanting more money for the homeless. And in the last... I don't know if it's 10 years, but they, they've asked for a billion dollars. They've received a billion dollars. So their funding's gone up by 10 times what it used to be. And the problem has gotten worse and worse and worse. And one of the main problems I'm seeing is these uh, used to be methadone clinics where they give you methadone to get you, get you off of heroin. Now they're actually, they don't want you get using dirty needles. So you go in and they'll actually shoot you up. My question is, do you have to bring your own dope or do they provide the dope too? Uh, it, it looks as if pe people in the neighborhoods are saying our neighborhood was never like this. These people are coming here from other communities in order to get their fix. Well, and it's I think that I think there's definitely uh, th there are counter actions to gerrymandering. So instead of redrawing lines, you just move people around. You start a factory here where you can hire 10,000 people to move into this community that was once uh, one side and, and we want it to be the other. So we'll just move people in so they can and get them to vote. Well, I also saw that on, on uh, in Seattle, they are paying the, the, the city and the state mm -hmm. are paying premium prices so three hundred thousand dollars for a condo and they're buying up whole buildings like whole blocks and they're putting homeless people in these now my question is i don't are they remodeling it and uh having you know multiple people living in one condo or do you just get the whole floor three hundred thousand dollars scot-free and then you can just invite all your buddies over and you guys can just piss in the corner and burn the place down uh does that sound like a good plan to you yeah so how do you supervise that situation you know or who does well i'll tell you who does uh gangs uh will i mean once you let no i'm talking about as far as the as far as what's the legal i mean what do you draw where do you draw the line as far as accountability goes and consequences for for people being irresponsible i think what we're seeing is uh we're seeing urban areas become now they're increasingly being abandoned we're seeing them become almost like uh wildernesses it's like an urban wilderness you think so well, you can just wander around and never see a cop and can't can't even see a business that's open. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine, especially, and we don't have any major cities around us. That's that's the thing, like, uh, out of sight, out of mind. For if us. Just, if they're going to do anything like that, I think there has to be work involved. Uh, for instance, let's say you took this building right here and you said, okay, we're going to uh, put gardens all along the windows, all over the whole thing. And you have to tend the garden. Uh, and if you're not tending, it needs, uh, it needs to be a peer pressure system, not, not like a law, but it's like, it needs to be like a community code within each building where <laughs> the citizens hold each other accountable. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's why they, I guess that's why they have juries, right? If you want to go to trial, if you're, you cause problems but it's really it's just it, it boils down to the law we've talked about it before i mean who's making the laws why you know 
and what's the situation? What do we do? We need to change the laws. How much time does that take? Uh, and that's what people like you know our, our state representatives are having to do. I mean, they're they've got all kinds of. Uh, I know that uh, Representative West. You know, he uh, put out some information about how the process that he goes through. You know, in the, in the legislative um, branch of government. You know, and, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, do we have a balanced justice system? Of course, that's a whole nother branch of the justice system is. That's why I've been telling people that you have, like, who are the judges? What do we know about the judges? Like, why is it, why is anybody voting for them? Nobody's paying attention to that. I never even know who the judge want, is. Whenever you I want justice, that, do you, what do you know about it? Like, what are you doing to be proactive about uh, the information, like the, the data that comes out of our our court systems? The thing is about judges, even when you, like, Google their name, you still can't find anything about them most of the time. Yeah. Um, it's um, Most of the time, I just vote for someone who hasn't been in there before just to get new blood in, but I don't know what I'm doing usually whenever I vote for a judge. Well, and then, and then it goes, it also is going to really boil down to who's your, uh, who's your law enforcement personnel? Who is the prosecutor of this alleged crime that, that was conducted that supposedly everybody thought was bad enough for there to be legal action? Well, uh, one thing uh, that I think a lot of people say that a lot of these things that we talk about are conspiracy theories, but uh, I just wanted to show you, you know, is it a conspiracy theory whenever it's right on their website, you know, the Great Reset? It's an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously <laughs> managing the direct consequences of the COVID-19 crisis to improve the state of the world. The World Economic Forum is, forum is yeah. starting the Great Reset Initiative. Yeah, it's a rat. If it is a theory, it's still a rational theory that that, you know, that that's something that could be if there was th this p these people out there that are trying to have control that you know control out of selfishness then could this be a possible scenario yes you know it yeah it seems seems reasonable and logical based on all of the current variables you know that are part of the situation <clears throat> Hub for cutting edge ideas, knowledge resource tools, leadership and enabling states. So what is this? Tell, tell me again more about this site that you're on. This is uh, the World World Banking, World Economic Forum. Okay, yeah. So basically- they, What is their mission statement uh, for the World Economic Forum? Well, let's just go to Wikipedia and read it. The way I understand it, they are the ones who loan small third world countries money so that they can, so they don't go into crisis and then have civil wars all over the world. Yeah. So we're talking, so you're talking about social status at this point too. Then if we're, if we're going to get into the economic you know part of it boosting capital for development here's how to advance sustainable foreign direct investment Go no, hey, go back again. Well, the back. forum's latest articles. No, go back, go back, go back. Right there, it says mi our mission. Uh, 
World Economic Forum is an international organization for public-private cooperation. The forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. It was established in 1971 as a not-for-profit foundation and its headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. It is independent, impartial, and not tied to any special interests. Um, they are the special interest. <laughs> the, forum, right. the forum strives in all its efforts to demonstrate entrepreneurship in the global public interest while upholding the highest standards of governance. Moral and intellectual integrity is at the heart of everything it does. So essentially, they use banking to control foreign governments. Uh, well, to they use banking to control, to to govern. No, they use banking to govern pro entrepreneurship. Forum strives in all its efforts to demonstrate entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and global public interest while upholding the highest standards of governance. So Moral and intellectual. I mean, their integrity. governments, their their companies' governments, or governance of foreign countries. So there, it's a council. I mean, are there bad actors? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's selfish people. You know, uh, do they have an overall positive impact on the world? Uh, I would imagine so. You know, um, are they using nefarious methods to reach goals? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what their methods are, all of their ways of, because there's so many different kinds of businesses out there. You know, if you're, if you're promoting entrepreneurship, are you, are you having discernment about who's, uh, getting access to your resources. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. That's the hard thing. That's the hard thing to, to do today is to discern when you get down to the people, you know, just the way that we're, we're governed and, and uh, the pay the papers are refreshing widespread conspiracy theories including that the great reset is part of a sinister plot for a global takeover by the rich and powerful why yeah, do you see these people are, are labeling it as sinister is there, are they labeling it as sinister solely because they're the ones in charge and my thing is who ordained them to be in charge i you know Bill Gates I don't know. is definitely in charge. Both of us Who? are using his products right now. Bill Gates. Oh, he's part of this? Yeah. You will own nothing and you will be happy. I think he has to be part of it because of how much money he has. Listen, so, I don't think you're up on all this information. Uh, the D Davos, they met in Davos, right? Like literally four months before COVID hit and talked about what the effect of COVID would be on the population if it struck. And this was in August. Yeah, I remember, I remember right seeing, the, seeing those. It hit. So, yeah, I mean, I I'm talking about these people. This, this is not, this is not, uh, in my opinion, I, mean, I get all excited about it. I get all upset about it, uh, emotional about it. But in my opinion, these people are evil. This is a plot to depopulate the planet. And it's not just a trivial deal of, uh, oh, they're they're some nonprofit organization. These people are trying to control. It, okay, so in my opinion, this goes. If I have a book by Albert Pike that is the handbook of the Freemasons, and it says in there, and this thing was written in the 1870s, they it says in there that uh, they have to try to take down the Pope by turning Russia communist. This is in 1870 saying this. They planned World War I, World War II, the Spanish flu. They planned uh, Korea, Vietnam, 
every single bit of this, every single the 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 war on terror was written about in 1870 by by the first the first BIA agent that was over Cherokee Nation was Albert Pike. He's the first person to explore Oklahoma. He wrote the handbook of the Freemasons and he had Yeah, I was gonna say I, I knew I'd heard his name and it had something to do with I didn't know it was the whole, Freemasons. He wrote the whole plan. Read about Albert Pike. He wrote the whole thing in 1870. Is he the guy that wears the little wizard hat and everything? There's a picture of him. Uh, he's usually got long silver hair and a beard, and he's like laying mm -hmm. back. It looks like a Ku Klux Klan picture or something. <laughs> but the, the deal, but yeah, my, hood. He's got a my my beard point hat. is, I, I I personally believe that everything that's happening was put into place a long time ago and it any of it could have been triggered at any point <clears throat> they were just waiting for the right time to put it into place and yeah. and they all know what's going on they're acting stupid uh, they keep us all entertained and fat and most people are not going to get agitated to the point where they actually do something about it but i mean how do you how do you how do you hand that down through so many generations though it's like it's it's like uh oh handing it down uh so that it continues it's, e you know? it's easy it, it, it continues guy, to guess who, guess who the guy guess who the guy is that did the spanish flu who bill gates's father he's the maybe he did the spanish flu. He, he's the researcher who was doing the gain of function research that created the bacterial meningitis. Let's see it. Pull it up. Show it to us. <laughs> I mean, I'm not refuting this, and I have my own biased opinions too. You know, I'm not gonna. Re I usually don't try to reveal them like too strongly until I've got conclusive evidence about what I'm thinking. Usually, when I usually when I speak too quickly, I'm. have a more more likelihood of it was his grandfather correctly it was his grandfather okay, okay now so who okay scroll up who where what website are we on here uh myth detector okay. yeah and i i can't i mean you're you're wasting our time on this as far as i'm concerned we need well, let's to find, find out account. what their source is news front editorial It's got a Rockefeller inst go to the Rockefeller Institute right there. Uh you said he worked for the Rockefeller Institute. Go back to that article. Cause you might find pieces of fact in there and then we can go. Here's his book, yeah. Bill Gates' yeah. book. Book taught me a lot about the Spanish flu. Who wrote the book? I wonder. It's a Bill Is Gates. Book about book. his grandpa. It's Bill Gates' book. <laughs> No, that he read a book. Oh, okay. he said, he's saying this book taught me. Or are they saying that Bill Gates's book taught them? I don't know who wrote the book. I don't think it was Bill Gates was the author. <clears throat> I've never heard of that one. Scribed. Go to uh, just... What's the grandfather's name? I'm trying to figure out. You should say in Wikipedia. It'll show. William him. Henry Gates. Uh, the first. Go look him up and it might show who uh, I think I read something about him being uh, German and uh, changing his name after World War II. Oh, man. Was... I mean, everybody's from another country, dude. Look at... Half these politicians that are in our federal government that are from other countries, like within one or two generations, or even first gen. Oh, well, I don't. Yeah, I imagine there's a lot of first generation people too. <clears throat> uh. 
Okay, so Bill Gates William Senior. William Henry Gates Senior. That's so that that was his. So, okay, go down. So no, his go, go back. Go back. Go back. Go back to that. Is that that was Wikipedia, right? Or whatever that one you were just on. Go back to it for a second. Uh, Gislaine Maxwell. His grandfather's name was Maxwell, and he's been caught with. Gislaine Maxwell and he and he denies anything to do with it. Wouldn't that be crazy if they were actually cousins? Or I mean they're yeah, they're family members. So whereas people are you whereas they're covering something up by by the whole sex plot, maybe I don't know. So we're still looking at his dad, right? Okay, go. That's okay. So over here, uh, doesn't it say what who his parents were? Bill Gates Senior. William Henry Gates. I thought that's it did. His dad. That's his. That's not his grandpa. Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't show how, who Bill Gates Senior's dad was. Though. Wait. Hang on. Uh, early life. William Henry Gates Sr. Uh, okay, 19 Gates married Mary Maxwell Gates. So his mother's maiden name was Maxwell. So it might could be his cousin on his mother's side. Yeah. So I mean, you're just going down that rabbit hole, you know, because there's a lot of people you can do this with and find connections. Because they're, it's like I said, it's a social status. They're in the same circles. You know how you always bump into somebody and you're like, oh, it's a small world. Yeah, that's because our world is is this group of people, right? You always wonder, yeah, it's like around here, you would never wonder why you would always run into someone <laughs> once a year at Christmas time. Well, duh, everyone comes back here at Christmas time. So, parents, James Willard Maxwell. There's no Wikipedia page on him. I find that hard to believe. Uh, I did see that? something. I saw some, I was watching a Joe Rogan uh, Wiki episode. Data. I was showing. I was watching a Joe Rogan episode, and they were talking about the uh, Church of Scientology and how Tom Cruise is basically the Pope, uh, and he has hundreds of thousands of uh, followers and that are basically servants that would do anything he says at the drop of a hat for no money. Uh, John Travolta is actually uh, ordained with the uh, power to kill anyone as judgment. And he's absolved of any crime, but um, but what, what was even John Travolta? Yeah, but the they called him the Archon or something like that, the Kakon, Kakon or something. But uh, but the craziest thing about it all, um, the the girl doing the interview, she's the girl from King of Queens, uh, and she um, she she whispered at one point that. <clears throat> that Wikipedia was the Church of Scientology, that they control it. So right now, I mean, let's say, you know, conspiracy of all conspiracy theories. Let's say that Tom Cruise is the orchestrator of all this secret stuff behind the scenes and none of us know, because uh, they play a long what game. Secret where... stuff? What secret Like in Wikipedia? Yeah. Well, that's in Wikipedia, there's no, it's not secret. I mean, if they're giving false information, then that's one they're, thing. They can, they can delete the page. There's no page for the grandfather of Bill Gates. If nobody's given any information that has been that? reviewed David. as being credible. Do you, do you, that's why I'm saying like people are so... Do that, David? That no one's provided any information to Bill Gates? Not, the not if there's the a world. conspiracy... Not if there's a conspiracy back then and people knew to either hide or destroy evidence... It would have been a lot easier then. 
if there's this community of people that you're talking about that would do all these things in secrecy, they're not going to leave any traces of their. It's not secret. All of it. It's not secret. That's what I'm saying. It's not secret. But I'm, what I'm saying is they. Their just religion is secret. Yeah, I'm saying the relig the people that are controlling behind the scenes, you can't you can't know who they are. Yeah. So why would they? Why sort of would they leave evidence. evidence about their deeds? It's not evidence. It's lack of evidence. Right. Because if they're the overlords, they're going to be like, I'm not, I'm not going to let everyone know that we're, we're trying to trick everyone. Why would we give them, be transparent and give them all of the information about ourselves? Uh, or the, and, and maybe they, there was some, and they collected it all, you know, I mean, that's, the, and so the thing about Wikipedia to me is like, okay, well, maybe they just aren't publishing it if it, there's not credible, there's not enough credible uh, testimony about it or well, evidence. I'll tell you who's a really good candidate for being a person who scrubs. That's it. why they, that's why the, that one of those texts, the ancient texts that you were looking up a while ago, they were saying there's not enough fact behind this. To, for I'll, us I'll, to get, I'll give you a conspiracy up. theory just out of the thin air. Uh, Bill Gates doesn't need anyone to help him scrub information. He owns the software on every computer other than Linux's and Apple. I, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> it. I, don't know I mean, literally, it. literally every Android phone or Android's Google, uh, Microsoft owns windows he owns uh edge uh he owns yeah that's why he got sued back in the 80s or 90s for a monopoly and he lost <clears throat> so i mean i maybe they're down to two but i know that there was a lawsuit over it unless that was a conspiracy too i mean a lot of people would say that oh that's a big you know it's just a big puppet show or whatever, but uh, so I don't know. It's discernment. You have to be really on your guard about falling prey to loose theories. <clears throat> I just find it really strange that there's not really. I mean, okay, here's I mean, Marianne Maxwell Gates. Okay, so. What Here's was the guy's name again? What was his grandpa's name? The guy that we're in, 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 in that we're talking about here. James Willard Maxwell. Okay, so let's look up. Uh, and and so these are all the sources we have. So I'm looking at the. Let's see. What is WikiTree? Here's her family. Here's her family tree right here. No, there was a, a website called WikiTree that had information about the person that you were looking up. I always look at the URL the, and, and see what information. Well, I'm at Jean Jean Star right now, and I'm looking at her whole. Here's yeah. here's her father. Here's this is her whole family tree. Okay. And you were set. And what year were you talking about that this? supposedly happened where they made this what uh, what was the guy's name james Pike, maxwell albert pike when did he start this i believe it was in 1870 1870 so let's just go to him and, and morals, morals and dogma this is the book right here this book's not for sale this book uh it's called, also known as the Scottish Rite, uh, 1871. Okay, well, Pikes, okay, uh, he's somewhere up above the influence and plagiarism where he comes into the picture. They're probably saying that because uh, part of he went to Mexico City and learned from he, from the Knights of Columbus. All right, hold on just a second. Oh. 
All right, scroll up some more. It must be in the introduction where they where they bring him into the picture because okay, there it is. Yeah, it's in the second third sentence. 1871 until 1969. Okay, what happened in 1969? <clears throat> the gold, when we got off the gold standard, uh, that is, that's when uh, Nixon got impeached and we, okay. he took us off the gold standard. Significant year for uh, secret societies. JFK, so I think, and, and, some, and at some point we're going to jump off into the Bitcoin thing. JFK and Eisenhower and Truman all warned us about the power of the uh, industrial complex, the, the capitalist industrial complex and secret societies. JFK, right before he was assassinated, warned nothing should be in secret. And he warned of secret societies. And then they assassinated him. I mean, I have yet to determine good or bad, to be honest. Good. Or, what's good or bad? The uh, the Freemason thing. Yeah, it's it's uh, confusing on purpose. Man, I guess only time will tell. He had a letter to Mazzini in in uh, in Italy, 1871. It's on display in the British Illuminati. Museum. It's, it's on display in the British Museum. Uh, London tries to deny the letter exists. Well, so yeah, I mean, the only thing I'm getting from this document is that it's on display somewhere. So can we? And oh, we can't read it. Is that what you're saying? Because it went out of public, they stopped printing it. Nineteen sixty nine. Did they ban it? No, it's in. It's in. We can book. read it then for ourselves. It's right here, dude. I'm trying to show it to you. The First World War must be brought out in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Czars in Russia, and of making that country a fortress of aesthetic communism. The divergences caused by the Agenter agents of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. So he's straight up saying he's got to take, in order to take down the power of the Pope, he's got to create communism in Russia. And yeah, but I mean, <clears throat> this is, I, I'd have to read the actual text itself from the book, like a published... The, the published book, not just somebody's little thing they typed up on their computer and said about it. Fine. Go ahead. I, I, that's all I'm saying. I'm, I mean, I'm again, I'm not saying that it's not true. I just can't. You at least I want to know what the argument is so you can find I can't it. formulate a judgment really very well about it without knowing for sure that Albert Pike was like the the person who said those exact words well i read it or within the publication that, that we're talking about what was the name of the publication again the title of it Supposedly, Albert Pike wrote that is the masonry thing. This then resumes the Illuminati's plan in the Middle East started by Wahhabis in the early 19th century. The following picks up the previous narrative from Livingston. 
The movement continued with what was called the Oxford Movement, established in the 1820s, under the guise of a missionary venture, but truly under the auspices of the Scottish Rite Freemasonry. The center of this activity again was Egypt, working through the Grand Lodge of the Fatimid Ismailis. The promoters of this endeavor came from the British branch of the Rosicrucians. The, the thrust focused on creating a reform movement within Islam, known as Salafi. Initially, they were formed to protect the British interest in the Suez Canal. The agent used to promote the Salafi movement was Jamal Uddin al-Afghani, working with the British intelligence services starting 1857. During the period 1858, Afghani traveled to the following places and accomplished the following to establish the Salafi reform movement to India, where he picked up his heretical beliefs in atheism, pantheism, and philosophy close in nature to the Lurianic Kabbalah to Afghanistan, where he became a confidential advisor to the ruler while maintaining relations with the Baha, British Freemasons, Sufis, and Nizari Muslims to Istanbul, Turkey, entertained by Ali Pasha, Freemason and Grand Vizier, five times under two different sultans, and in 1871 to Cairo, Egypt. While in Cairo, Afghani formed the Arab Masonic Society, reorganized and exported the Scottish Rite and Grand Orient Lodges of Freemasonry to Syria, Turkey, and Persia and made contacts with future leaders and taught them the Gnosticism of the Islamis. Some of these leaders were the following, future leader of Salafi, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, right here, this is the guy he wrote to. And James Sauna, an Italian Jew, study of Giuseppe Mazzini, advisor to the Egyptian royal family, and his girlfriend, traveling companion, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let's. The original thing I was showing you, the book that he wrote was Morals and Dogma. I have a copy of that here at my house. It's the rules of the Freemasons, Scottish Rite. Yeah. And then uh, this one here, this, this is a letter to Mazzini. Illuminati plan for three world wars. I was more interested. Hang on, hang, give me one I was second. more interested in you just hearing the idea, but we got bogged down yeah. in trying to find out who the sources were. But well, you, I mean, you like sometimes I just I try to be uh, resistant to hearing more theories. You know what I mean? Like I've already, and and there's a reason why, for me. Uh, and so I just, I've got to be careful about what to believe, dude. Uh, so sometimes I'm resistant to it. You know, sometimes I'm not so open to the ideas because. My deal is like, how do you know if you're going to be open to something if you haven't heard it yet? Huh? My deal is how do you know if you want to be open to something if you I haven't heard, heard it before? It I've, I've, I have heard it before. I've, I've, I've done research on Albert Pike before. I forgot I forgot about like most of it. Um, my, my my fascination with it is the fact that it was done after the Civil War and before any of the World War One or before Russia even having a revolution or any of that. Yeah. yeah, I heard about him probably it was probably about oh six years ago when I started kind of looking into that stuff. Um, all right well let's call uh, it quits for today and uh let's do this again uh if it's if you get bored tomorrow yeah definitely dude i'd love to because there's gonna be plenty more i mean we didn't you know there's a lot of stuff that we didn't talk about today the weather uh, just i mean there's just so much yeah all the um, stuff yeah, i gathered right to. here i gathered in one hour so i could come up with a bunch more for tomorrow okay sounds good dude are you snowed in What's your vehicle like? I got out today. I went over by Justin's place. See how he's doing. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. If you want to call me, go ahead and call me. Okay. No, I'm probably just going to be sitting around the house. Uh, what do you do? Are you, what are you doing today? I'm just playing video you know? games and uh, doing some grading and. Okay. Maybe I'll swing by. Not, you know, if you're bored. 
Yeah. I went over by Gary's yesterday. Right, right before it started, the weather got bad, dude. How's I doing? was like freaking Ace Ventura about the last 200 yards of my house because my windshield was froze over. And I don't have heat in my truck. Uh, but, man, then that sleet was hitting me right in the eyeballs. <laughs> What's Gary been up to? Uh, he's just getting ready to start his new job. New electrician job? Yep. Here. Here? Yep. Well, that's awesome. So he's off, though, right now. Hardly ever seen. Give him a holler. All right. Well, I was supposed I'm to go off. help him today, but I figured he didn't, he didn't call me, and I figured he didn't get out because of the snow. So I'm going to I'm gonna turn right the video off before we do too much personal information. I don't want to have to edit this video very much. Yeah, that's what I know. I just was – I'm just using first names. All right. Love you, man. All right, dude. Love you, too. Later. Get forward. I'm here. Okay. All right. Later.